Yeah, so it's uh, 3 p.m. and we are all set to begin with another stimulating session on connecting the dots. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We live in an important period today in the history of recruitment. It's the time of the great resignation and the great reshuffle. Never before has been the demand for talent so high and the war for talent is real. To adapt to virtual hiring and onboarding, companies have relooked at their hiring process to make it more agile. Why hiring becomes becoming a challenge in current times? Is this a lot to do with talent demand and compensation or any other reasons why candidate decline offers? Join us for this enthralling session and watch our experts share their valuable inputs on the impact of the pandemic offer declines, virtual hiring, and the future of work. We will discuss about some interesting insights and strategies on how to stem offer declines, attract talent, and keep them engaged. HRAI welcomes you all to the session on connecting the dots, hiring challenges amidst the great resignation. To know more about HRAI and its events, I would request all the participants to visit the link and details posted in the chat window. It would be great to have all the participants feedback. We will be running a poll before the QNS session. I request all participants to kindly give your feedback on the session. I now take the privilege to introduce our esteemed panel members for our today's webinar. Ms. Hina Damija, Lead Business Partner, Human Resource, Hero Housing Finance, an IIM alumni with 14 plus years of experience in human resources. Aligning HR with business strategy, with focus on accelerated growth of the organization, proactive strategist, providing HR expertise in implementing business initiatives and determining essential tactical HR elements across. She aims to acquire and apply human resource knowledge and skills to create an environment that fosters open communication, trust, mutual respect, teamwork, and professional development to utilize conceptual as well as hands-on technical skill in integrating HR with the business. Have ability to work effectively with restricted budget and generated undivided commitment and dedication among personnel. The diverse cross-industry exp experience in HR starting from outsourcing industry where managed all major sectors, that is IT, M MF M FMCG, finance, to financial domain, which added to, my, to her relationship building skills. Specialities, leadership, hiring, engaging, and developing talent, OD initiatives, performance management and development, organizational climate and employee engagement and relations. You can follow her on LinkedIn. The link for the same has been shared in the chat window. Now I'll, I, I'll introduce to, to our- Yeah, hi. I'll introduce to our next panel member, Ms. Richa Singh, Director Strategy, Ops, BD, and HR, Adrex Solutions Private Limited. Richa comes with a, an experience of 15 plus years as a director with Adrex Solutions Private Limited, a manpower solution firm, and her forte lies in HR, strategic initiatives, and business development. She is a single working mother. She wanted to become a magician, but landed to become an HR. Passionate about her work, a people person, result oriented, loves to do yoga and highly spiritual person. At office, mostly addressed as a go-to woman. Loves to travel and believes in miracles. You can also follow her on LinkedIn. The link for the same has been shared in the chat window. Our next panel member, Mr. Sandeep Kumar, Head HR Operations India, Sodexo India Services Private Limited. Ms. Mr. Sandeep Kumar is a senior HR leader enabling business growth for more than two decades. He has been working with Sodexo since 2014. He is also the winner of Top 100 Great People Manager 2021 by Forbes India. He talks about employee experience, com campus to corporate, mentoring and coaching, new way of working, hybrid working. He is an alumnus of XISS Ranchi and worked with hospitality, IT, telecom, office automation, social development sectors with organizations like HCL, SOS Children's Villages. Mr. Sandeep is passionate about HR transformation, HR technology, employee experience, employability, 
change management, professional networking, networking, talent creation, and career coaching. You can also follow him on LinkedIn. The link for the same has been shared in the chat window. Now I'll introduce our panel come moderator for today's session. Ms. Shikha Gupta, Head Talent Acquisition, Riversand, a Syndigo company. Shikha Gupta is an HR leader with 18 years of rich and diverse work experience in the areas of talent acquisition, campus, lateral, and leadership, HR generalist, learning and development, organizational development, employee engagement, and HR business partner functions. She has been instrumental in developing, leading, and streamlining the HR and recruitment functions with her proven ability to enhance operational effectiveness and meet organizational level goals with the cost, time, and quality parameters. Shita is currently working as head talent acquisition at Riversand, a Syndigo company, Bangalore. See, she is primarily responsible for attracting talent across levels and geographies, India and US. She is a part of the leadership team and is involved in multiple organization-wide strategic initiatives. Prior, prior to that, she has been a part of both product and IT service organizations like Winwire Technologies, Wipro, OnMobile, Global Limited, Tally India, Oracle, and NIIT, where she has been strategically involved in their growth and success while leading different HR functions across geographies. You can also follow her on LinkedIn. The link for the same has been shared in the chat window. And with this, we are done with the introductions. I will now hand over the platform to Ms. Shikha to take the discussion forward. Wonderful. Thanks for the introduction. Thank you so much, Faisal, for this nice introduction. Feels good. Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this fantastic session today with the most burning topic that we have in today's times, right? Hiring challenges amidst the great resignation. I'm fortunate to be hosting this discussion because I think it's the problem of every HR professional today. Let's learn from the experts as to what are their tips and tricks to deal with this situation. Uh, let's start with Richa. Uh, my first and foremost question, what do you think, you know, I mean, COVID has stuck too long. Nobody expected it to be. What do you think are the major hiring challenges of a recruiter, right? How can this person keep the motivation or the inspiration to go on and on with, you know, with the current market situations? How do you deal with that immense pressure? Some light on that, Richard? Yes, of course. Thank you so much for asking, Shikha. It's a very, uh, you know, serious question for me. Uh, what I feel being, since I represent a recruitment firm, and uh, we hear a lot from the recruiters who have been into uh, the sourcing field. Uh, plus, of course, we have our customers who also showcase their pains. So what I feel that, you know, there's, there's too much of noise in the market, which is making it hard to grab any candidate's attention. Uh, thousands of recruiters are calling one single candidate. You know, that's the first important and uh, the difficult part for any recruiter. Second, great candidates, good candidates are holding multiple options, multiple offers. I mean, uh, being a recruitment company, especially the tech hiring is so much into boom that, uh, I mean, there's not a single day that uh, we get to hear that this candidate is, is holding eight offers or nine offers, be it a small company, a startup, a fintech company, or an IT company, or any company. So, uh, Yes, so this is happening. Another is, I think there's a shortage of talent now because of course everybody is hiring uh, across the nation. So, jo pehle talent easily milta tha, ab it is started becoming difficult. And then uh, uh, these candidates are even being pulled with higher salary ranges, which is again, I really don't understand till when it will Hap, uh, be happening like that because ultimately a saturation point will also come when where employees will also come and say Ki, ye to bohat hua. now what you know then fourth point i feel that hiring managers are also very picky to pick up the people as in what they really need right uh, then uh, the last but not the least maybe i think they are are not enough hours to work in a day to you know look into all the applications what we receive every day on a lighter side maybe so yes i think these are the few uh, uh, problem areas 
challenging part of being a recruiter how we can uh, uh, maybe uh, in my opinion as i said that there are 2000 people calling one only candidate maybe we need to build a very strong employer brand hum कैंडिडेट उनके पास आए वो ज्यादा बेटर है राधर यू नो अ कंपनी शुड गो टू द कैंडिडेट सो बींग बिल्डिंग अ स्ट्रॉन्ग एम्प्लॉयर ब्रांड इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वी हैव टू मेक द इंटरव्यू एक्सपीरियंस ऑल्सो वेरी नाइस बिकॉज इवन एंड इन केसेस वी हैव हर्ड दैट यू नो इंटरव्यू वॉज नाइस टेक्निकल क्वेश्चन वर नाइस बट द एनवायरमेंट वॉज नॉट सो फ्रेंडली so kabhi kabhi aisa hota hai that 40% of the cases of the decline ratio in the offers sometimes it does impact what i feel i might be wrong maybe uh third could be like by providing regular updates to the candidates that what is happening exactly interview dene ke baad people just do not call them back be be it if it is the company directly hiring or maybe through the recruitment agencies so that there's a lag here then uh, also what we can do maybe making the recruitment process little nicer these people can go and shake their hands with the bosses their future bosses or maybe the team they are going to work with so i think yes uh, these could be few points which i would want to highlight very well uh, richa and what in addition to that what i keep telling my team is you have no control over no shows declines or a candidate's attitude all that you can control is doing more number of offers more submissions more selections more offers as the only way you can keep going absolutely okay. right we don't know when we will get or some relief from covid very well That said thank uh, you anybody would like to add some thoughts uh, maybe uh, hina or sandeep i think uh, personally uh, i had uh, witnessed it two of my team members who were likely to join so one has declined that mm-hmm. is confirmed and the other is i mean still not confirming whether he is going to join or not right so mm-hmm. most of the recruiters as well as the employers are facing this mm-hmm. uh, why this is happening my understanding is perhaps uh, just after the last two years there is a lot which has opened people are trying to hire uh, equal to what they we used to do before the covid and possibly uh, people have more, like what uh, richard told everybody has more than one offer so earlier people used to understand that okay what if i am comparing two offers so what is to be compared which is the company what is the salary what is the role or maybe which is the place where i am going to work so if i belong to say bangalore i would look for a job in bangalore if i belong to if i want to a particular role so whether that skill or that particular role is available in this what we are offering what kind of company is this whether i would like to work for a startup or a long standing company if i have lo- worked for a long standing company where the growth is slightly slower i may feel that the grass is greener on the other side i would like to join a startup and maybe i'll get a good growth lots of e shop and all all those are fundamentals which people weigh and decide where i should join yeah. there is another element which has got added recently is whether i'll be having the flexibility to work from home or work from office uh, looking at everybody has his or her own circumstances like somebody who is a working woman would and the school has not yet opened so the mother is still thinking that it is better that i stay at home only and work and if if there are two companies one is flexible to give you an opportunity to work from home i would like to join that rather than one which is saying that you have to come at least for 3 days in a week to the office right so this is a new element which has got added before you decide finally what are you going to do whether you're going to join or not and i think for some more months till the time everything gets normal because we are still in a transition of getting back to normal schools have not opened um, transportation has not become normal in terms of public transport and all school buses if if school schools are open school buses are not running so and every every individual has his or her own context at what stage of life you are are you a young parent or you are an i mean so accordingly the decision this is 
playing a very important role in making a decision. And I think that is an element which is making it more complex because we had not got this syllabus in our course. We were just thinking that as an HR recruiter that we'll be able to fix all those four. This is a new thing which has come into our syllabus, which we have not yet tried to, I mean, understood how to decipher. In that, fact, uh, Sandeep, that was the next question that I was about to ask you as yeah, to why yeah. do you think, you know, companies should adopt a hybrid model? What will be the positives, negatives, you know, how do we improve the situation? Yeah. Yeah. So if uh, before I go to that, if anybody else like Hina, if you have any point for the last question. So, Sandeep, uh, yeah. And Richa, you have well covered those points. But here yeah. I would like to emphasize on, uh, you know, two aspects uh, to it. One is the interview experience, uh, what the individual is, uh, you know, getting on the table when the person either they're on a virtual meet or in-person meet is very important. Mm -hmm. Another is the uh, connect and the appropriate behavior of a recruiter, I think is one of the important points, you know, which we have not touched so far. Because the person who is interacting uh, with a prospective candidate and a, or an employer to an organization, you know, recruiter demonstrate the culture and behavior deriving in the organization. Correct. So as an individual yeah. or as a candidate, uh, you know, would know beyond the, uh, you know, interview experience is the sole point of connect. So I say recruitment partners and the recruitment team plays very important role that what we connect, how we connect and what behavior we demonstrate because we are the ones who are creating the brand for the organization as a content. So this was uh, what I wanted to touch upon. Rest, uh, Sandeep and Richa and Shikha, you have uh, well covered. You know what, Hina, very well put, but you know, you do good selling, you're good brand ambassadors, you, you sell the role, you sell the opportunity, right? You talk about best people practices and all of that. Still, I mean, my personal view somewhere is that money has become a driving factor, right? I'm at 10 lakhs, I have an offer of 14, I have another offer of 18, but I need 24. If you're willing to pay me 24, I am on. Right. So those are the kind of discussions candidates are having these days. Nevertheless, I, I completely agree to you, Chikha. And in fact, you know, to HR, AI, uh, you know, very soon, I'm sure Peter and Fezel are going to touch upon the next uh, topic. You know, it's the, uh, you know, hiring challenges uh, amidst the great resignation. Next is the great resignation. And uh, revengeful hiring, uh, what uh, 2022 is expected to be. So now it is going yeah. to be the, you know, the year of revenge hiring. So trust yeah. me, that's a vicious circle which keeps on moving. And I completely agree to you. The survey uh, talks about uh, even not even the pressures, even within the market, there is a jump of close to 56%. And we together are responsible for it, for every person carrying, you know, two, three offers. I think, I think one of, one of the factor which is working in a candidate's mind um, more broadly is mm -hmm. the last two years, the increments were not very high. So everybody is thinking that I have not got my due in the last two years. So if I have got a chance, let me recover whatever I lost in one go. Mm -hmm. So whatever so everybody wherever they were working uh, they are, the increments were moderate as compared to the previous yeah. years so everybody is trying to compensate for that backlog and that's why the jump is looking big and sometimes it looks like look at him how can he ask so much yeah. I mean, 50 percent 60 percent but that's a fact so because yeah. people are trying to compensate for what they have lost in the last two years. Yes. So Sandeep, fortunately un or unfortunately, right, candidates fail to probably recognize two things or understand two things. One is one job jump, right, cannot bridge the gap of two, three, four years, whatever the scenarios. Second, whenever you have to do cost optimization, right, the tallest trees or the fattest bills are the first to get cut, right? right? 
once like Hina said, 2022 is going to get over, we move on mm-hmm. to 2023 with, you know, uh, brighter, better future, better prospects, right? All these people who've joined at extremely fat salaries probably will be the first ones to go. I'm not sure if the candidates are even thinking about it. That's what even I mentioned, a saturation point will come. Yeah. Will come. Absolutely. May, there's a possibility that people might have to take a cut also. Yes, yes. A step back to move ahead after a couple of years, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, Sandeep, on the hybrid working model, right? Yeah. What do you think? Uh, why should we adopt? And how is it going to ease out the problems that we are facing currently? And these problems don't come to an end, especially for the hiring industry. See, if you look at it, uh, hybrid model uh, as a work model. Mm-hmm. Uh, historically, uh, see, this is at this point of time after the COVID, people are talking about it. Many of us who have grown in smaller cities of the country, we know that uh, if particularly PSU colony, suppose it's an NTPC colony or a BHEL colony or a Steel Authority of India colony, if you have stayed there, if you have lived that life, what you would have seen that your father and mother they are working very well within that same boundary. The office is also there and the house is also there, right? So it was a proper, perfect hybrid model. So you don't need to go outside any community. You don't worry about the infection and all. It's a community (laughs) in itself and everybody was working. So it was there always. Even in the military area, if you go to a Kent area, people are working, the family is there, school is also, army school is also there. So everything is typical hybrid model was there. And recently I was reading in one of the, uh, some uh, web uh, somewhere that there are people who are asking that, can the office not be closer to our home? Or can, see, currently what has happened? My home has become my office and there is an, a physical building where, which is considered to be my office. And that's why we are saying the hybrid model is two days I work here, two or three days I go to the office is the hybrid model. But there are some employees who have started expecting, can we get something like a NTPC colony where a stadium is also there, club is also there, house is also there, the hospital is also there, school is also there, and your office is also there. So that is also an expectation which is getting built. And definitely the deep pocketed companies can create, they can go to the tier three, tier four cities and create a community living where everything is possible. And it happens across the world. However, coming to the current model, which we are talking about, definitely this is the need and this is not only for today, this is going to continue, right? And it depends as to which industry you belong to. Uh, Initially, we were thinking that an IT, ITS company where the client wants everything to be secured within four walls of a building, how can we think of taking the work at home, how the data will be secured and all. So all that myth is broken, we, we know that that is done. But still, there are industries where you need to be at the workplace, then only it can happen. Like a factory, you cannot think of making some, producing something, sitting at yeah. home, you have to go there and work on the assembly line. So industry to industry, the hybrid model would vary. Would be and, really. and within the same industry also, from role to role, it would be. Correct. Like in a in a factory situation also, there are some roles where you don't need to go to the factory every day. Possibly once in a while you should go. The rest of the day you can work from anywhere. You can work from home or you can work from anywhere. So that is what is the model which is getting created. Correct. We are fortunate being in Sodexo. Uh, we are very fortunate because we cater to, to the facilities of majority of our clients, whether it's an IT, ITS company, or it's a factory, or it's a mining area, or it's a hospital, or a school, or whatever. Now look at the hybrid hybrid model at a school and a college. The students are studying from home. Admission taken in Singapore University, sitting in Noida and completing the course. So this is the hybrid model of education which is working, right? So uh, so this is going to this is going to be our life. Think of the next generation who is studying now, who is doing his engineering or our engineering now are studying in class 12, they will get used to this lifestyle. They will say, okay, if I can study from my home, why can't I work from my home? Or if I can study from anywhere, why can't I work from anywhere? 
so this is going to throw up a lot of new opportunities new new types of jobs will be designed it can be what can be done from the home what can be done from anywhere what can be done from the office only that's how so it's a necessity which is going to stay with us and it's not only with the corporate it's with the government with any segment of your life there is going to be so wherever there is a need for physical presence we will have to be there and this is what is the need and it is going to stay yeah. so so i think uh, accordingly what our uh, employers need to do to attract the talent uh, so that uh, so so it was easy to tell that okay we have such a nice building one tallest building with a big hmm. banner and all and people used to get motivated that you know i work in this tall building this is my brand which is displayed here in gurgaon so now those things are getting virtual you have to reimagine yeah. you have to capture the imagination of your employers or the prospective employers who can see your brand everywhere right who can feel the presence of your brand everywhere not only in that building while you're crossing uh, the, the fact that uh, you know the covid has stayed too long right everybody is looking at that flexibility little bit of freedom uh, thank just i just remember to what you said right even the real estate industry has yeah. gone through a major transition right Correct. homes with four bedrooms five bedrooms which weren't selling you know as much as till about two years back because everybody needs a room children need their room for the school all of us yeah. need our own rooms for our home offices so even the real estate industry is going through a shift right thanks to this hybrid model not only that even the office space offices, yeah. they are asking the builders or the designers to design it in such a way that the same office can be utilized as a social gathering space so once we come to office and mm-hmm. it can be also utilized in an office space so many mm-hmm. of the barriers like cabins and all are getting destroyed mm-hmm. so it is becoming more open so uh, mm-hmm. the co- major indian companies which were mm-hmm. running traditionally with large cabins and all they are destroying all those barriers everybody Even, is getting into an open space yeah. and uh, other thing is they are, they are thinking more of the hygiene and health and the safety of the mm-hmm. employees when they are constructing the office Uh, so those are the changes which are happening in the office design as well and even uh, co-working spaces right yeah. that has become a fashion we wouldn't hear about these about like a few years back you know two different companies in co-inhabiting in a on a similar uh, floor or in a similar building even co-working spaces have become a fashion because uh, the need for space has changed now no the other other day i was reading there is a nascom report which is saying that in india to cater to the new world of the hybrid model so somebody who was working in gurgaon has started working from bhopal which is his home or her home or has started working from say gorakhpur so they have identified 100 cities in the country which are going to get decentralized in terms of all these projects getting transferred to those smaller cities and people who have been in gorakhpur they will go to that particular city center of that particular office and then then you accordingly they would work so i think in the days to come maybe another uh, 18 to 24 months we will see a lot of change in we have to wait and watch yeah. <laughs> thank you thank you so much for sharing these insights and i want to now ask him a million dollar question right i think every hr person is looking for an answer what do you think you know according to you we can do to reduce the number of declines or backouts as we move forward we've been pained with it by it for the last two years any any tips from your side that you know that can give recruiters a better breathing space over to you thank you certainly it's a million dollar question that you know each of the hr across the industry finds that how we can do that well you know we did discuss uh, as we started that what are the challenges why we see there are so many backouts uh, one of the reason uh, is uh, you know the window shopping the, the candidates are doing but still uh, i see uh, you know there are certain prospects from the hr side if we cover well and do it diligently this gives an impact to our number 
So starting from few of the factors, uh, which I say, you know, pre-recruitment aspects, which are clear in the case. First is clearly laying down the job description and a prospective growth path to a person. Because it's about an investment, certainly, but that uh, gives an, uh, you know, holistic and a long-term view oh. that, yes, this is what, if I suppose to uh, you know, join this organization, this is my prospect, career progression, which may look like. So, uh, you know, I would say mid to senior level, definitely look for this uh, level of aspect. Absolutely. Important is to clearly lay down the job description, which, uh, you know, tells that, yes, even the role goes beyond, uh, you know, behind the described KREs. So what is there? These are the two important things pre-recruitment. While we are having a discussion with the person, it is important as a third step to understand the reason for moment. So why it plays a crucial role while we are shortlisting and screening the profile is if I know that somebody from a remote location would like to come back to Delhi. So yes, uh, we have been talking uh, about the hybrid model. Still, I say India, uh, you know, as a holistic and all the industry, we have lot to evolve to uh, get into the hybrid model completely. And the culture for working from home, other than the IT sector, uh, working from office would prevail other than the IT sectors, right? So it's important that uh, while we are hiring, we understand that if person is looking for a relocation near to a hometown, giving a layman example, you know, should be preferred than a person uh, moving uh, just for a growth aspect. Because the person who is coming near to a family would shift uh, from Bangalore to Delhi as compared to a person who is moving just for a better opportunity. So these are the few aspects which we as a HR, the, you know, partner to a prospective uh, employee or a candidate should look at. Of course, a uh, few basic aspects, a regular connect uh, with a candidate that gives a uh, hint to us. That can be, uh, you know, a festive uh, greeting. That can be a small, uh, you know, token of appreciation from the organization side. Of course, that requires, uh, you know, cost attached to it. But as an organization, if we start investing into those aspects, that really, you know, pays. And we at Hero Housing have uh, experienced uh, the increase in the joining ratio and the appreciation for those small tokens. So these are the few aspects, uh, you know, I think broadly rest all uh, we did cover. So I feel these four or five pointers are very important, Shekha, as for me. Very, very beautifully articulated, Hina. And from my experience, uh, maybe I would like to add something. As far as I have noticed in tech hiring, most of the candidates only run behind salary. This is my fixed, this is my variable, and this is my total CTC. In addition to that, a lot of these organizations have a benefits basket, right? My medical, if we can quantify those, so medical insurance coverage up to say three lakhs, mobile internet reimbursement up to so-and-so, whatever, tuition fee reimbursement, the multiple benefits which an organization offers. So if along with the CTC, if you can quantify those benefits and tell the candidate, you know, in addition to the 10 lakh salary that I'm giving you, you're also entitled to these benefits. I think that works to a certain extent. So certainly 200,000, yeah. all other benefits okay. like these uh, social security benefits mm. and other benefits uh, to an organization like many of the financial organizations have a car benefit scheme, housing yeah. industry have a, uh, you know, housing subsidy benefit. Over to it, there are organizations when we name for the fintech, there are uh, goodies, uh, you know, as a joining bonus worth rupees, uh, good five digit uh, numbers, numbers uh, which they give, <laughs> you know, I don't want to quote that, but there is a lot. Yeah, yeah. I there think apart one, from... I think apart from that, I would like to add, uh, I think Shika, you mm -hmm. talked about the technical. So I, I feel they also want to know what technology they are going to get. If 
majorly I've seen that if somebody is, uh, many of my friends have refused as an offer because suppose they are asked to do a maintenance project or a development project. Yeah, so yeah that's, that's what Hina so, highlighted, right? So if I want to, so when you're talking about the job description, so right. what is exactly, is it going to be a development project or, mm -hmm. or a uh, maintenance project? So what, I what? want to transform myself from a maintenance uh, mm -hmm. software engineer to a development of software engineer so that's the way i look at it yeah. the other other thing which we should do is while we are designing the job description i think we should try to give uh, more clarity about not only the job which you are going to do how empowered you are in that particular job like what are the kind of decisions you can take in that job yeah. like, uh, what are your uh, what are your relationships what are your internal relationships what are your external relationships and why they are needed. So suppose you are suppose so you are an HR person, and you need to have some external relationships management and some internal. What are the objectives of those relationship management? So that tells a holistic. Uh, I mean that gives a holistic view of the role, and uh, of course, uh, I my personal formula is, and this has applied. I have applied throughout my life is, mm -hmm. I try to give the candidate the reality as close as possible like yeah. if if i have to tell that you will have to work for like you, in the initial days if uh, when i used to uh, recruit a lot and i used to hire a team member in my team i used to tell that you will have to make at least 30 40 calls in a day right mm -hmm. so if you are not able to do that please don't join my team basically do the right yeah. expectation so, setting yeah so tell yeah. tell the total truth and then the chances of somebody backing out is reduced. Mm -hmm. it, at least you may get some people only in your basket, but those who are coming in, they have joined the bus and they will come with you. So I, that is what I feel we should do. But unfortunately, as a recruiter, I am, uh, I am pressurized for numbers. So uh, what I do is I just commit because he's showing sir mere buffer mein, funnel mein itna hai. and then one fine day he can say sorry boss for nahi aavi, main fir se try kar. but that we should not try to do i mean i know as a recruiter we need to do we need to show to the hiring manager ki bhai, mere paas itne log hai, hai, no? otherwise mm -hmm. sir, mm -hmm. War further escalate kar deta hai, aapko aur char review mein jana padta hai, war time mm -hmm. mein. <laughs> no, I think uh, very important points, role clarity, yeah. career growth path, explaining the salary stack properly, the benefits basket, what's in it for me basically, why should I join you? Yeah. Right? Branding, selling, all these are very important aspects. Lovely. Now, we've been talking about hiring, hiring, hiring. Let's understand from Richa. Hiring to bahut ovi boss. Now, this hiring... COVID is also causing a lot of attrition, right? The great resignation wave. So how is the great resignation affecting the employee morale or employee retention? Hmm. How do we deal with that? That is another problem, right? It's a leaky bucket. Upar right. se recruitment fill kar rahe, niche se <laughs> attrition is causing. Yeah. So how do you, how do we stop? Yes, that? yes. Uh, before that, uh, I mean, I just wanted to add on something to the earlier question, which sure. Shina addressed beautifully, and Sandeep also yeah. added on to something. Uh, yeah. Being a recruitment company, you know, because of this, so much offers are being declined. You know, we have to again work hard, and you know, by the end of the month, when we sit across the revenue sheet, oh my God, I lost a BMW this month. <laughs> 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 it's just exactly that feeling, you know. Uh, I mean, the hiring is in boom. Utna hi boom resignation bhi hai. It's like, you know, I lost a Ferrari by like 20 lakhs. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Anyway, so coming to this, uh, the, if, uh, the employee retention and the great resignation part, I mean, it's been a wonderful experience, especially if I talk about these two years during this um, COVID time. So when the lockdown and this uh, had come, uh, at that time, we were like 120 people sitting under one roof. And most of our people uh, were freshers and had come and all the way relocated from uh, various locations like from Orisa or, you know, uh, even North. A lot of, lot of people have, have come. So 
we to be honest uh, we did not ask anybody to go we just offered them that you know we'll adjust everything uh, be with us because people we are very people oriented organization and uh, but you know because of the parents force these candidates had to go back and they resigned that we, i don't know when i'll be able to come back but my parents are coming uh, are asking us to come back of course and there was a pg issue also because nobody was wanting to keep uh, people in pg also apart from that what i can say that it is a very uh, you know serious issue we really need to understand the cause the root cause of the resignation second which level like we have top level middle level juniors right कहाँ से सबसे ज्यादा रेजिग्नेशन फ्लोट होते हैं वो भी हमें नोटिफाई करना पड़ेगा देन मे बी वी कैन मेक अ टेलर्ड प्रोग्राम फॉर एम्प्लॉय रिटेंशन वी कैन ऑलवेज ट्राई अ लेवल बेस्ट अल्टीमेटली द चॉइस इज देयर दैट दे वॉन्ट टू बी विथ हर्स और नॉट राइट समटाइम पीपल इज हैप्पी बट स्टिल दे वॉन्ट टू गो बिकॉज दे माइट हैव गॉट अ बेटर ऑफर और एन ऑपरचुनिटी बट अगेन द कंपनी हैज रिस्पेक्टिव सैलरी स्ट्रक्चर्स ऑल्सो विच दे नीड टू बी देयर दे कैन नॉट change something for somebody if you know for one person so now how this can uh, i mean i can propose a solution because we have experimented few things and it has been working uh, for us one is that we can apart from the salary we can incentivize the loyalty of the candidate of the person who is working with us uh, so uh, what does it mean apart from the salary the bonus the incentives what we give we can talk about like the commitment or the stability level what you they can uh, promise to us i'm not asking about um, the bond or something like that but if they commit us something that okay two years hypothetically maybe uh, whatever the salary range they are we can give them a 10 or a 20% a uh, bonus every month that's what uh, you know i can i we have proposed in our own organization and there are few people who have come up and you know uh, uh, talked about it and and actually we have to do the paperwork also now with the, all these kind of people who have committed their time to us we are very focused to put our more time in them because we know that you know uh, they are going to be a horse for a longer time now we we are able to mentor them in a right direction so one is this uh, we can provide opportunities to grow we should be as we rightly discussed in the earlier discussion that wo growth dikhana bahut zaruri hai agar hum wo usko cabin ke andar hi rakhenge aur logon tak nahi batayenge we have to show them that this is the growth path that you can have for yourself in coming time we need to prove to employees that there is more to organization than the bottom line right and last but not the least by prioritizing the culture and connection with the people keeping work aside we sometime we should take them out go for a picnic do some outing maintain some good relationship with them and over and above what i think jo sabse nine active hours hote hain day ke वो हमारे साथ होते हैं एक छत के नीचे हम काम कर रहे होते हैं सो वी नीड टू गिव देम फील मेक देम फील लाइक अ फैमिली यू नो बिकॉज उस घर जाते हो आप रेस्ट करते हो थोड़ी देर बाद जाके सो जाते हो द मोस्ट एक्टिव आवर्स यू आर वर्किंग सो दे नीड टू फील लाइक अ फैमिली दैट्स ऑल आई कैन से अबाउट इट yeah very very well said uh, richa and i think a couple of other things that probably we could do you know uh, and most lot of organizations do practice you know identifying say high potentials high performers right mm -hmm. designing different programs for high potentials so that high pots like we are called right. so that they don't move towards the great resignation wave or you know designing some rewards and recognition strategies for an organization which suit different teams customized right which enables employee retention right so i think yeah those two things are also in, into practice right. beautiful inputs uh any one of you would yeah, yeah. Sandeep, uh, i would like to add a few things what we do uh, as a company is yeah. we, around 3 4 years back uh, we created our entire pms in a different model it's called aspire so what we are trying to tell each and every employee is that whatever you aspire to be you plan and we'll try to get you achieve that okay 
so uh, so your career aspirations are to be documented and which you can review at time to time as and when you require to and it is entirely in your hand that whatever you are aspiring company is there to help you to reach there in terms of suppose you have an aspiration assess where exactly you are against that in terms of your competency and based on that what are the development plans which you need to create we will help you in uh, getting those and then so this is one uh, putting the groundwork then the next thing is as our company uh, is growing very well across the globe so we create a lot of awareness about the growth of, 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 of our company so that people know that if the company is growing there are growth opportunities for us also and accordingly just married to that so the, the awareness created about our growth opportunity uh, we are very extensively uh, publishing igps and very honestly and very uh, intensively working on igps so that people if they are thinking that maybe i'm not sure whether i'll get this kind of role in this company and that's why i should jump off mm -hmm. they are very clear that okay i am going to get this Yeah. there are instances where maybe i would have planned that i will open this role maybe 3 months from now but i but through the stay interview we do a lots of stay interviews that what is your intention to stay with us uh, we have got an inclination or a hint that this person may leave we advance that opportunity maybe a month or so in advance like if i have a role in my mind say 3 months or 6 months from now if i feel that one of my team member is likely to leave because he or she is also looking for that kind of role only so i will publish it in advance so that he or she does not leave us and i bridge that gap so so these are some of the things which has really helped us retain majority of our talents mm -hmm. and uh, i think these are the things which we must try great input simon that also makes uh, makes me realize some of these organizations are also using communication as a great channel right yeah. internal communication virtual right. meetings open houses town halls to build that confidence back you know into the employees saying that yes we are a growing organization we are here we care for you and so on and so forth right uh pina would you want to add something or should i ask yes. another million dollar question yes. i'm yes. not going to pay you any for input <laughs> for this <laughs> i think in addition to what uh, you know you three have already added as you said in communication and uh, you know the internal communication is the right word the yeah. open houses and so on i feel uh, in terms of the retention the appreciation of a person and uh, you know not taking the talented employee for granted and considering them as you know sandeep rightly said the practice at sedexo considering them as asset doing an appreciation be it in the open house or within the team not leaving an opportunity for that uh, reward and recognition that plays an important role well said all of us want to feel loved wanted appreciated i think and value so appreciation and value is the right uh, word correct yeah. because unless we being valued for what we are uh, at the current place that's that's i think uh, uh, i feel above money or beyond money that is the factor what uh, an employee look at correct so you did tell us what recruiters should do right to decrease the offer declines and backouts uh, now any ideas on some thoughts on you know what employers what kind of strategy can employers or hiring teams use you know to to reduce the offer declines apart from the recruiter any other good practices so see uh few of the things are certainly interrelated i will add on what uh, as a strategic uh, initiatives or intervention the organization should do mm -hmm. employer branding plays an important role absolutely and this so that's that's bang uh, on the first strategy that how the employer is uh, doing the branding in terms of uh, having a social presence uh, you know be it uh, on uh, the linkedin 
or uh, you know i would say nowadays in there are ample of uh, social portals wherein uh, maintaining a right career page and whatever activities we are doing within the organization so be it a career for uh, you know path an engagement connect or a reward recognition showcasing it as a right bundle is the strategy what i and just to add to what you just uh, nailed it hina like jobs uh, just a second sandeep yeah, jobs yeah. which are present which are relevant which are open in the company please industries companies are you listening only the right jobs should be there on the careers page no ghosting no faking no building candidate pipeline no messing okay. around right the right jobs and the right applications will phone fantastic yes over to you one last point before uh, you know i hand over to sandeep this uh, i think strategically organizations should be open uh, for uh, notice buyout yes so that that's an important uh, piece if we are in a requirement of an urgent talent we should uh, add on the small uh, aspect so it's up to the prospective uh, you know organization from where the candidate is coming whether that's given or not but that also plays so it's a combined uh, you know a role of an uh, hr person at, at the management level that yes these are the things we are yeah. just, just to add to that we at rivers and sindigo we are doing both offering joining bonus as well if somebody can join us quickly and buying out notice period as well so in fact if a person join he shared so even <laughs> we do have this uh, that if somebody is joining within you know n number of days there is a increased joining bonus yes the amount is uh, higher than the, yes yes correct so that's that's the way uh, you know one of the way yeah yes. all of us have become uh, very experimental in nature over to you sandeep so no, i was just trying to add a small point on what hina told in terms of employer branding what the employees have seen uh, as you uh, you as a brand in the last 2 years how you have treated your employees in the last 2 years is also impacted so i know uh, there are uh, companies who have treated their employees very well and they have created that brand image that in difficult times this is a brand which has stood uh, with their employees and that credibility has really gone up and that is one big piece which has really helped some of the brands at the same time if you have not done it well then even if today you are offering a lot people may have a doubt about your employer brand and that's why We have Certainly, to that can clear. equally impact also, or yes, you know, I'm second to some people on uh, that. So it's about how well you are uh, bundling your strategies and showcasing it uh, appropriately uh, okay. at a social platform. Yes, when you are bundling it, don't fail to highlight what good things you did during those last two years for your employees. Okay. Yes, that's what Absolutely. I. Absolutely, and you know, and icing on the cake would be the same things if. Uh, the employees from your organization are retweeting correct you know or reposting so that builds uh, more trust to the uh, media and to the prospective uh, you know people who are and seeing it. that not only the organization the employees of that respective organization are also retweeting reposting so there is an impact or there is an emotion attached to that particular post yeah mm. and and goodness or kindness is like that right the more you keep spreading it the more ripples it creates across yeah. we we are we are uh, running good on time yeah i, I think yeah we are we i want to ask you one question, question. And... no okay. sandeep i have to ask you this question we cannot go home okay, okay. Well, we cannot end this without that okay. work life balance the uh, magical okay. term hmm. we've been hearing this for the last 2 years right employers are like you know work hard work hard work hard while the others are work smart work smart work smart right and now your family at home husband children in laws siblings parents boss strike a balance you can't be working 14 18 hours a day so what is your mantra how do we you know kind of establish that work life balance see i think uh, 
I'll give you some stories about work-life balance. Okay. okay. So long back, you see, people are talking about it now, but long back, say around 15 years back, I read one mm -hmm. small article about a company's MD. Somebody asked him that what is work-life balance to you? So he told that, see, when I'm in a board meeting, my wife will never call me because he knows that I'm in a board meeting. And on every Saturday evening, without fail, I go and see a new Bollywood release with my wife. So entire company knows that I, this six to nine, I am in a theater. And nobody from my company calls me because they know that he has gone for a movie. Even after that, if somebody calls during six to nine, that means it's super, super urgent. The company is on fire and that's why somebody has called. Or in, in my board meeting, if my wife asks, uh, gives me a call, that means some, my house is on the fire. house is on fire. Right. So otherwise, I have integrated my work and life so well, so I don't need to balance it. Right. So the to me, this is what I also practice. To me, it is not about balancing. It is about integrating. That has got further uh, enhanced during the last two years mm -hmm. because everybody started realizing. See what happened that earlier your boss will say, hey, tum itna late se kaise hai? Main to jaldi a jata hu. without mm -hmm. realizing that you are in a car mein hai ho and he is coming in a train or he is coming mm -hmm. in a bus. Right Now the boss has got that empathy that okay, इसको भी वैक्सीन लगाने में उतना ही टाइम लगता है जितना मुझे लगता है मैं बड़ा वीआईपी हूं तो मुझे जल्दी नहीं लगेगा इसको भी कोरोना से ठीक होने में उतना ही टाइम लगता है जितना मुझे लगता है अगर मैं ज्यादा पैसे वाला हूं तो मैं जल्दी ठीक नहीं हो जाऊंगा तो दोस रियलाइजेशंस हैव कम इसके घर में मेड नहीं आई है तो मैं इसने भी झाड़ू पोछा लगाया है और मेरे घर में मेड नहीं है तो मैंने भी झाड़ू पोछा लगाया तो वो सारा रियलाइजेशन आने से नाउ आई थिंक इट हैज द एम्पैथी हैज कम यस एम्पैथी हैज कम the True. leaders have become more empathetic and that is why we are in a very good sweet spot to create the right work life integration i will never say you cannot balance it all you need to do is see uh, you need to understand what is the priority for your own family and your own life and what is the priority for your work so i know some runners i am a long distance runner and i know one lady uh, she is far far superior in terms of running she is the md of one of the company uh, she used to get up early in the morning three o'clock in bangalore and she'll finish her run come back play with her dog and then full day she'll run a company and then take care of her child also everything she'll do because she knows what is important for me for my own goodness so that she will adjust some time she will get it done and because she starts her day so early, she finishes it early. She, she is not a socializer who is going for late night parties and all. So accordingly, you need to understand what is important for you in your personal life, in your work life, as comp uh, in keeping in mind your company's this thing. And everybody has started. Earlier, your boss never used to understand you possibly. Now that gap has got reduced. So you are in a very good situation to integrate it. And that's what I feel we must do, all of us must do, whether as an employer and as an employee. Very well said. I think it's also a matter of discipline or a certain Correct. behavior, right? So this gentleman's people know that he will be at the theater. That's a behavior, or that's a discipline that he's created over a period of you and know, he has, years. And he has months. not kept it private. He has told everybody. Everybody. Please, please note that I won't be available six to nine on a Saturday evening. Because I and my wife are going for a new movie. Movie, right? right yeah. So, so yeah. that's how you can create it. And that is all, applicable to all of us. All of us. Wonderfully yeah. said. I, I um, just wanted Richard, to add uh, two yeah. more lines. I mean, for me, uh, work-life balance and, uh, you know, time is everything for me. Uh, being a single mother of a daughter and, you know, uh, and plus working also, I have to, like, I'm the man and the woman of the house both. Oh. So uh, I understand how it needs to be. I'm a morning person. I have to do my yoga. I have to meditate. I have to do puja. I have to teach my daughter to come to my office. 
everything you know i have to teach her when i go back home so i have set my days accordingly that monday wednesday friday all important things to be done and completed you know tuesday thursday saturday i have to be at my home by 6:30 and be with my daughter emergencies are always welcome it is perfectly fine we need to accommodate accordingly but uh, for me planning and scheduling is very important in i mean I, individually speaking Arija, you have given a very beautiful example of what I just said: discipline and behavior. There is a certain discipline that you follow on these particular days. There is a behavior that you follow or exhibit. So right. your life is planned, right? right? And you are able to do justice to both work, home, exactly. and everything. Right. Lovely. I am loving this conversation, Faisal. I don't want to end the webinar, but I know uh, we are. We are good on time. Oh, okay, actually, now. what should I do next? <laughs> so I feel uh, we have given a short time to discuss this uh, topic. Is it yeah. there, Chika? Yes, we can go <laughs> on. Um, these are very interesting conversations with stories from Sandeep and everyone. Uh, do we have questions from the audience that I can? Yes, yes, we have received a two to three questions, so we can uh, let me do that. Yeah. yeah, but before that, we'll just uh, run the poll. Sure. So during this time, we request all participants to feel free and put their questions in the chat box. You can also name the speaker to whom you want your question to be answered. Shika, you can take the questions which are at the chat box. All right, I shall do that. So let me start bottoms up. So there's one question which says, "How can we reach the speakers offline?" Okay, <laughs> okay, we'll <laughs> share our email IDs. Not to worry. Um, or LinkedIn through LinkedIn, they can reach to us through LinkedIn. Yeah. So audiences, uh, Faisal has already put the LinkedIn profiles. Please feel free to connect and drop us a DM, and we should be able to. Uh, answer your questions. Uh, yes, I I don't have audience questions in the chat window. Uh, this is one from Peterson that has come uh, uh, okay. like with the with the rising expectations of candidates. Do mm -hmm. we see the possibilities of looking at other countries like Thailand, Vietnam, Ethiopia mm -hmm. for fulfilling rising talent demand in India? What are your views around this? And this is question to Richa. Richa, yeah. Okay, okay. So if I have understood the question correctly, uh, uh, then only possibly I'll be the right to answer. I'll, I'll read it one more time. With the rising expectations of the candidates, do we see possibilities of looking at other countries, for example, Thailand, Vietnam, Ethiopia, for fulfilling rising talent demands in India? What are your views? So, which means sourcing from other geographies to fulfill hiring needs in India. Yeah, but then again, I mean, uh, is it a cross-border transaction like from that place to India? The willingness should be there. I mean, mm -hmm. people are still wanting to go from India to Africa or, you know, or such kind of countries. And working remotely, if you, uh, I mean, sitting in India and working, working for such companies, of course, there are chances, but then again, uh, time zone issues could be a problem. And this might only work for some IT companies or maybe IT enabled services organization. I yes, think because uh, they're higher in volumes. I think uh, there are regulatory uh, restrictions which we need to be mindful of. Like mm -hmm. a person coming from Thailand and working in India possible there are some regulations which he needs to follow right he needs to follow number two is <clears throat> i i think i am very pessimistic i mean very optimistic about one thing that india has layers of talent so i i i am very sure that we will have lots of people uh, available in the market only it's a matter of uh, not only creating the demand but also trying to look for the right supply pools. Uh, there are pools which are available, maybe which are untouched. The employer has to go a little further. Employee has to come a little 
in, and they need to bridge the gap. So still we have a huge amount of talent within India and uh, some amount of experimentation, some amount of training, skilling, mm -hmm. reskilling can take care of this. So we don't need to go out to other countries to take care. That's and what maybe to add to what uh, Sandeep and Risha said, uh, Peterson, uh, we can also look at contracting models right, yeah. in these geographies. You really, you necessarily need not do full-time permanent hiring. We can have yeah. resources on contract across the globe on a third-party payroll and stuff like that. That also is a doable model, provided the organization is ready for it. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm, sure sure very difficult. I'm so sorry. Yeah, please. Yeah, I, one of I you. Was just, <laughs> I was just sharing, Shikha. Uh -huh. We have added on, uh, you know, to what you said that we are already on that ladder. Hmm. Fantastic. Okay. See, and I was saying that finding unicorn candidates have become very impossible task these days. <laughs> you know, I would like to rephrase: finding a candidate is a very impossible task these days. Period. <laughs> <laughs> so like, which role, which geography? I think yeah, it's a it's it's a it's a marathon. God knows when it's gonna come to an end. But it and just, also, I think we need to protect our company with these uh, moonlighters. If you understand mm -hmm. moonlighters, they do the dual job. You yeah. know, we the companies really need to have certain policies in the organization. The HR should be uh, well versed with this thing that you know uh, there should be certain system and process to identify such people so be kahi aur kaam kar raat ko kahi aur kaam kar whatever you know ye uh, we really need to find such people hey, you, you know, by asking their it income tax returns or whatsoever we, we really hey, need... you, you nailed it there are so many <laughs> polls on linkedin richa which says you know with people directly asking can you do two jobs at a time and 85 87% of the people are saying yes how the hell do you do two jobs at a time? And the whole gig economy concept, right? Hourly basis, incentive basis, project basis, right? Where you can do odd jobs, small jobs. So they- And then also you talk about work-life balance. Work-life balance. So in during daytime, I'm running TA for an organization. In the nighttime, I'm probably an entrepreneur doing something. I don't know, yeah. Yeah, moonlighters, we really have to be watchful of those. Yeah, I think the PF Act takes care of that. But if you are not- <laughs> going to do i mean a proper job like a 10 yeah, you cannot have two pf numbers with two employers so Absolutely. that can be detected but yes there are chances that you can work in a company without pf and all uh, in some capacity and people have tried it because they realize that they have ample time at their hand when they were sitting at home and uh, what they used to do in the full day they used to finish it in four hours only when they were sitting at home. Uh, so, so Sandeep, I wouldn't name the organization. I came across one candidate, architect level candidate. He mm -hmm. was a full-time employee with us, but at the same time, he was also running his company in his wife's name. Correct. And then we had to sack the person. So right? there are many such examples across the industries, not even the architects, even the financial sector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's difficult to find one candidate for one knockery. We have one candidate doing two knockeries at the same time. <laughs> That's why, right, because he, he's difficult. You are, it's difficult to find because he's looking for an arrangement like that where he can work this also. That, that's why I'm saying it has become very important for them to understand that what kind of flexibility I'm getting in the new job. So am I allowed to do moonlighting can be one of the considerations right. for not that right. is why everybody keeps asking, are you going to offer me permanent work from home? Do you have plans of opening the office? If yeah. yes, how many days? I mean, you feel like a CID person, right? Who's answering all these questions. Why so many questions? Yeah, probably it could be exploring moonlighting options. You know, in fact, while we are doing the assessments uh, at the HR end, so there is a stringent process in terms of the hiring we can take care of these things, uh, you know, by doing a due check, because I think nowadays most of the organization yeah. do a due for the salary slip and the bank statements. Yeah. And in the financial sectors, there is a civil check to understand, uh, you know, if the person is not involved into any throttling or uh, other practices of defaulting. 
So there are so many ways yeah. in terms of while doing a document check and salary slips, unless you know going to a level that those transactions are uh, not in the bank account. <laughs> so no, so, uh, so uh, you know what, Hina? Uh, long yeah, back I started that salary slip and bank statements are more important than form sixteen mango. Yes, hmm. right. Yeah. Form sixteen gives, gives you the real picture. So we do take financial organizations yeah. do take bank statements, salary slip, form sixteen, form sixteen, especially uh, for uh, you know the sales function or the people who are uh, at the front level to understand what are the kind of incentivization because mm. with that incentivization we can directly relate to a performance. Correct, correct. Mm. So I, I, so in HCL I used to do it. फॉर्म 16 के बिना किसी कैंडिडेट को आगे आगे बढ़ाते ही नहीं तो अक्रॉस यू नो बीएफएसआई स्पेशली इन द एनबीएफसी एंड एचएफसी हायरिंग्स वी डू टेक केयर फॉर दिस बेसिक चेक लवली ऑल राइट थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू अगेन फॉर दिस वंडरफुल आफ्टरनून फॉर शेयरिंग सच ग्रेट इनपुट्स स्टोरीज इनसाइट्स i look forward to more discussions with you and hrai thank you so much for organizing this it was indeed a pleasure talking to all of you this afternoon thank you so much again thanks sikha thank for you. moderating it so well and fajal for giving us this opportunity thank yes, you sikha so you 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 are fab it was nice interacting with you we'll stay connected all of us thank you so much thank you so much thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. sandeep thank you, thank you hina bye take thank care. you mish take bye. care bye bye yeah thank you thank you mishika for moderating this session and making it so interactive and exciting a big thank you to our panel members ms hina ms richa and mr sandeep for sharing their valuable thoughts and insights with us it has been a privilege having you all for this enlightening session to all those who wish to learn and grow you can access the recording of our today's session on our youtube link shared in the chat window before we conclude with today's session we would also want to thank all our associations dhia nascom coe cliptop telgro tle wi cci linkedin local amdabad and india for supporting hria's event to more, to know more about this association request you to kindly visit the links provided in the chat window do join us for our next event of connecting the dots on the topic where are we with dei diverse equitable inclusive request you all to kindly register for this event at the link mentioned in the chat window see you soon stay safe take care and bye for now thank you thank you right. bye thank you so much thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. bye bye